what even are proxies and why should you care around? So if you're struggling to edit on your old school PC, old school computer and it's just chugging along the timeline, having a bad time, then this video is for you. So I'm gonna teach you all about proxies, how it's gonna speed up your workflow and make your timeline buttery smooth. So let's get straight into it. What's up guys, Andrew Ralph here, and the reason that I'm gonna tell you about proxies today is because they're so underused and it's gonna speed up your editing process so much. So what a proxy is, is it's a low resolution file that takes the place of your high resolution files, but only while you're editing. And then when you're ready to export, it basically replaces all the proxy files, or the low resolution files, with your high resolution files, and it, you export it just like a normal video. And in Premiere Pro, it's literally one of the easiest things you can set up and it's gonna save you so much time. So I'm gonna step you through each of the steps needed to set them up and uh, let's get into it. But first, if you're new here, this channel is all about teaching you the necessary skills you need to go full time with your filmmaking or photography. So if that's like you're into, then be sure to hit the subscribe button down here and turn on the bell to be notified every single time I release a new video. All right, so let's jump onto Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to set up your proxies and show you how much of a difference it's gonna make to your workflow. All right, so how we set up proxies in Premiere Pro is we right click the clip or the clips that we want to uh, create a proxy for and we choose proxy, create proxies and we get this little dialog box that comes up and mine's already set up because I've already set up the proxies but I'm gonna show you how to get this uh, to where it is now. Um, so basically what we're going to have to do is we're going to add an ingest preset, but we have to actually make the ingest preset before we can get started. So let's jump over to Media Encoder and we'll uh, get the preset set up. So now we're over in Media Encoder, what we're going to do is we're going to go a new preset. The first one we want to set is an encoding preset and then we're going to use the ingest preset to uh, reference the encoding preset. So we'll set up the encoding preset. Now this is already set up for mine, but I'm gonna go through this with you. So I've been playing around with proxies for a while and the settings that I've got, I've found are the best for like the speed that the proxies encode at and the quality is is so, so, it's not like great, but it's good enough to be able to edit on. So the settings I use are 480p, so 852 by 480. And the frame rate is just based on the source. So if you've got 25, 50, 120, whatever, it'll just take that from the clip itself. I always set the field order to progressive just in case there's some interlaced clips, then it will de-interlace it for you. And the aspect's always square pixels as well. Let me go down a little bit further. Don't worry about all this performance and stuff. The main one we want to choose is this bitrate setting. So down in bitrate encoding, choose CBR, which stands for constant bitrate. And then we're going to set the target bitrate to two or two megabits per second. Um, so this is basically going to compress the file to be quite low quality, but it just means that it churns out really quick and you can scrub through the timeline real easily. Now once you've done this, we just need to go to the top and set a preset name. So I just go real generic and make it super easy to identify. So I do H.264, which is a codec, and I do the resolution, which is 480p, and then I do match frame rate. So I just know that it's matching the frame rate. Uh, 2K is the bit rate, and then I just do proxy at the end, so I know that it's a, a proxy preset. And once you've done this, we can press OK. So now, if you've never used proxies before, you are gonna be horrified by the files that come out of this. Like, it is a very low res proxy, and the reason that I've done this again is just for speed. Like, I'd rather just have real bad quality, be able to smash it out, and then when I'm ready for the final, you know, pass through, I'll just turn them off, then I can, you know, pre-render it or go through and watch it at full res. Right, so now we're halfway there, but we do now have to make an ingest preset. What the ingest preset does is it basically tells Premiere Pro what to reference. So it goes, hey, you wanna make proxies and we wanna use this preset to be able to make these proxies. So again, we go into the preset browser and we do new preset and we choose create ingest preset. And now we're gonna change a few things here. So don't worry about transfer. The only one we're gonna to touch is this transcode files to destination. Um, the destination doesn't really matter because at the time of creating the proxy is gonna ask you where you wanna do it or if you wanna um, add the files next to the original files itself. So don't stress about what the file destination is there. We do wanna go down to format but and choose H.264. And then from there, our preset should come up. So we've got the H.264, 480p, match frame rate, 2K proxy. And that is what I wanna choose. And now again, we go up to the top and we choose a preset name. All right, now for the preset name, I name it the exact same thing. So H.264, 480p, matched frame rate 2k but instead of typing proxy at the end i write ingest so i know that it's a separate one from the actual proxy itself and afterwards we're going to actually have to choose the ingest preset not the proxy one so we know which one it is 
Once done that, we can press OK. Now, real quick, before we jump back into Premiere Pro, we want to make reference as to where these proxies actually live. So, if you right-click on them, you can actually do a reveal preset file, and it will show you the like where they actually live. Why this is important is because when we actually go into Premiere Pro and we set it up, it's going to ask you to, to locate where they are. So, you can either take note of where these are, or if you go back into Media Encoder, you can export them. So you just export them to wherever you want to live. I actually put them on my Dropbox, so then if I'm using it on a on a different computer, I can just quickly reference it. Um, but wherever you want it, wherever you want it to live, then you just choose where you want to live. Once you've done that, we can jump back into Premiere Pro. All right, so now we're back in Premiere Pro. We're going to add the ingest preset that we just made. So we're going to click on this. All right, so a real quick tip: if you're on Mac and you don't actually know where the file is, what you can do, a little sneaky one, is you can actually just grab the file and drag it into this little window, and it will automatically reroute your program to the actual folder that it lives in. Once you've got that, we can do yes, I'm not going to override it because I've already got it. It'll say, you know, it'll load it up. And then under format, it should say H.264 and the preset should be the one that you've just made and it should say ingest at the end, not proxy. So make sure you choose the one that says ingest. And then down the bottom here, destination, we've got next to original media in proxy folder. Right, so now I highly recommend you choose this because what it's going to do is where your footage lives, it's just going to add a new folder called proxies and it's going to add all the proxies in there and it's just it lives right next to your footage and they're not going to get lost when if you need to quickly transfer it to another computer or whatnot they're there ready to go and it's super easy so now this is all set up we just have to press ok it's going to load up media encoder and it's going to start creating the proxy straight away so you can see like this computer this is my laptop this computer is not a powerful machine and it is crushing this video so it, it doesn't take long if you use the settings that i've given you and that's the reason why i've made them low quality and the settings that i've done is so it, it encodes them real, real quick. Boom, just like that, proxy is done. We can bring the clip into a new timeline and we can make sure that the proxy is working. So now we've got the clip in the timeline. We need to go to this little add icon here. We've got the button editor. And what you actually need to do is you need to grab this one, which is called toggle proxies. You need to drag it down into here. And then once we've got that, we can actually use this to toggle proxy. So what this does is when we click it, it actually automatically selects the proxy file and it, and it shows that. And then when you unselect it, it reverts back to the high resolution media. So let's go full screen. You might be able to see this, you might not. So you can see the quality is dropping as I press this down. So when it's blue, it means that it's active. And when it's not, when it's white, it's not active. So when you're editing, you want to have this on. And this is this is the power of proxies, okay? So this is proxies uh, off. So if you see, I try scrub and it, it starts chugging like instantly. My, my, this computer is not very good at all. So it, it's going to chug real quick. But you can see, I can't, it just keeps chugging. I can't really, like, okay, now it's kind of, nah, still, still struggling. Still struggling. So now if I turn the proxies on, check this out. So you can just scrub virtually no lag. I can just really do whatever I want. Because the file is so, so much small, the bit rate's so low, uh, and the resolution's quite low as well. So it's real easy for the, um, the program to handle. And so once you've done this, then that's literally it. Like, you can, you can turn the proxies on when you're editing and turn them off if you need to see a bit more detail if you want to if you want to go into depth into some things like your color grading or something but the cool thing is is that when you go to export it'll just use the high resolution files it doesn't use these proxies at all you don't have to turn this off it'll just automatically use the high res files straight away which is super super cool and that's pretty much it so once you get this set up you'll start using it a lot um the cool thing that I use it for, and the main thing I use it for, is when I'm actually, uh, when I send these files to my editor. So when I send these to Jay to edit, I actually create proxies and I just send him the proxy files so he can just work on that. Instead of sending, you know, 30, 40, 50 gigabytes of, of the actual high resolution files, I can just send him proxy files and it might be 500 megabytes to a gigabyte. Just super easy to send, super quick. He, he can edit on that. And then when he sends the files back over, then I just reconnect the file. So I'll show you how to do that real quick as well. So if someone's editing with proxies and you want to reconnect the full resolution media, you do just that. So you right click the clip and you go down into proxies and you go reconnect full resolution media. And then you just find the clips, the clip or the clips that you want to reconnect. And then again, it'll go back to your full resolution and you can render it out just like a normal video. So that is the power of proxies. The cool thing about it is that if you have a really, really old machine, you can edit like 4K, 8K, whatever footage you want in proxy form. Um, once it comes to render time, it is gonna still chug because it's using full resolution files. But for the actual editing process, it speeds it up so much. But like I've saved so much time using proxies um, and it's just sped up my workflow so much more, especially now I'm using 4K. My computer's good, but it still does chug when I'm using 4K, using multiple you know, streams of video 
you know, color correction on top, got titles and stuff going on, it is eventually just gonna slow down. So this will speed up that process. It'll free up that time to be able to focus on the edit instead of getting annoyed with your computer being slow and it chugging and not being able to watch back the actual clip itself. So yeah. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you learned something from this and I hope you start implementing this proxy workflow into your workflow. I mean, you, you'll see straight away, it's gonna speed up your process, um, especially if you've got a slower computer or you're, you're using big files like 4K, 6K, 8K, those kind of things. Um, it'll just help you speed it up and, and be more efficient when you're actually doing the editing. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment below if you use this, if you're gonna start using it. If you have any questions about proxies, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn the bell to be notified every single time I release a new video. And as always, happy photo and filmmaking and I'll see you on the next one. See ya. That didn't even have an actual script. Boom! Oh, that's that's not the record button. Okay.